हेलो फ्रेंड वेलकम टू द क्लास सो जस्ट लेट मी नो वेदर आई एम क्लियरली ऑडिबल आई एम विजिबल टू यू स्टूडेंट जस्ट लेट मी नो वेदर आई एम ऑडिबल टू यू एंड विजिबल टू यू आल्सो ओके एनी वन जस्ट एनी बॉडी गिव ए रिप्लाई दैट वेदर आई एम ऑडिबल और नॉट okay so today we are uh, going to discuss the mcqs on low pressure baroreceptor so basically our target is to uh, discuss this topic of low pressure baroreceptor so that we cannot miss any mcq from this topic okay so low pressure baroreceptor discussion will be there as well as there will be mcq discussion will be there okay so we are starting the topic here so low pressure baroreceptor they are under the heading of cardio pulmonary baroreceptor so student all of you are there i am audible to you na i am audible just give me a thumbs up that whether i am audible to you or not okay right so now we are starting this topic that cardio pulmonary barrow receptor okay so cardio pulmonary barrow receptor remember uh, they are basically of two type one is uh, from the name cardio pulmonary so cardio pulmonary barrow receptor means from the name i can guess that they will be located at the level of cardiac chamber so they are located within the chambers of atrium wall they are also located within the pulmonary artery wall okay so pulmonary artery wall they are also located and the third location of this receptor is within the ventricles so wall of the ventricle also have this kind of receptor right so uh, first we will discuss that receptor which are present at the level of this atrium wall and pulmonary arterial wall atrium wall and pulmonary arterial wall they are actually they are actually your low pressure baroreceptor so i am writing here that this pulmonary arterial wall and atrium wall oh hello okay so this atrium wall baroreceptor and the baroreceptor which are located at the level of pulmonary artery wall they are in combination known as low pressure barrow receptor they are known as the low pressure barrow receptor now look at why they are low, known as the low pressure barrow receptor generally the barrow receptor that we have seen okay generally the barrow receptor that we have seen which are located at the level of carotid sinus region as well as aortic arch region okay carotid sinus and aortic arch region these two barrow receptor they are located at the level of carotid sinus means carotid artery so they, that is a high pressure zone similarly the arch of aorta they are also the high pressure zone so that's why basically barrow receptor which are located here aortic arch and carotid sinus region they are barrow receptor which are nothing but high pressure barrow receptor high pressure barrow receptor but again if i note down then i will find out that this barrow receptor which are located at the carotid sinus and aortic arch they are also a kind of stretch receptor or they are also known as the mecano receptor so they are also known as the stretch receptor or mecano receptor similarly if you look at the low pressure barrow receptor this low pressure barrow receptor they are also stretch receptor they are also stretch receptor or also they are known as the mecano receptor but but because this atrium wall receptor if i ask you what is the pressure within the atrium you will understand that atrium pressure is very 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 lower than that of the carotid artery pressure or arch of aorta pressure similarly if you look at the pressure at the level of pulmonary artery the pressure is very very less that means i can understand 
that this atrium wall baroreceptor as well as this pulmonary arterial wall baroreceptor they are located within a low pressure zone or they are located within venous site okay i can write down like this or i can understand like this that they are located on the venous site so that's why the pressure this receptor are working at a low pressure zone on the other hand the normal baroreceptor which are located in the carotid sinus as well as aortic arch they are the high pressure zone arterial site that's why this normal baroreceptor in the carotid sinus and aortic arch they are activated by our blood pressure they are activated by our blood pressure but low pressure baroreceptor is not activated by uh, blood pressure okay so this low pressure baroreceptor which are located in the atrium wall and pulmonary artery they are activated by stretch now when the stretch will occur because this receptor are located on the venous side because this receptor are located on the venous side they basically detect the volume rather than blood pressure note down this is important so cardiopulmonary baroreceptor first we are discussing this atrium wall and pulmonary artery receptor so atrium wall receptor as well as pulmonary artery wall receptor they are activated by volume so i am writing here so activation of this low pressure baroreceptor activation of this low pressure baroreceptor will occur whenever there is increase stretch on increase stretch on atrium okay this increase stretch on atrium will occur in which condition any condition if there is increase in venous return to the atrium then this receptor will be activated okay so same for the true for the pulmonary artery but more and more important receptor are located at the level of atrium wall so this atrium wall i have to remember that they are the main site of low pressure baroreceptor how this will be activated by increased venous return due to any condition or if there is any deformity of this left atrium or right atrium wall right so now i am asking that within this atrium wall okay where they are exactly located so what is the location of this low pressure baroreceptor okay so just now i told you that they are mainly at the level of right atrium wall greater than left atrium wall so both the atrium wall contain the <coughs> baroreceptor uh, low pressure baroreceptor but mainly it is in the right atrium wall okay as well as pulmonary artery wall, wall is also there right so three side i have to remember about low pressure baroreceptor right atrium main followed by left atrium wall as well as pulmonary arterial wall when they will be activated if there is increase in volume for right ventricle for right sided atrium it is the venous return whenever there is increase in venous return that will be activated now if they are asking specifically that within this right atrium wall exactly where they are located then your answer will be it is located at the veno atrial junction it is located at the veno atrial junction meaning means where the inferior vena cava is entering into the right atrium that is the venous and atrium junction so that is the veno atrial junction so for the right atrium inferior vena cava where it is entering at the level of right atrium that is the exact location where this low pressure baroreceptor is located and for the left atrium for the left atrium where the pulmonary veins are entering that is the exact location where this low pressure baroreceptor are located getting my point so please please remember this veno atrial wall junction this is important so i told you that activation of this low pressure baroreceptor will be will occur whenever there is increase in venous return or there is increase in stretch on the atrium so i can understand that if the person is suffering from congestive heart failure congestive heart failure so what will happen there will be increased volume in the right atrium so right atrium is stretch then also this low pressure baroreceptor will be activated now depending on the activation there are basically two types of this atrium receptor there are two types type a receptor and type b receptor type a receptor are those low pressure baroreceptor which are activated during systole of the ventricle okay sorry systole of the systole of the atrium and type b receptor 
they are activated during diastole of the atrium okay now i'm asking that uh, uh, now the thing is getting complicated that although they are low pressure baroreceptor they should be activated by increased stretch on the right atrium but now i am saying there are two types of receptor one receptor is type a and one receptor is type b okay so one is activated during systole of the right atrium and one is activated during diastole of the right atrium or left atrium okay now if you look at the pressure change of the atrium then you know that atrium pressure change gives a wave like this okay and all of you know this wave is nothing but known as the this is known as the jvp jvp right so jvp this is the a wave so this a wave means this is the peak of the peak of the pressure during atrium contraction so atrium systole whenever the pressure is peaking during atrium systole this is the location where this type a receptor will be activated because i told you the pressure has to increase the atrium has to stretch otherwise the receptor will not be activated now when the stretch can occur if the atrium is contracting so there will be huge pressure within the atrium so receptor will be activated or suppose the atrium is not contracting but due to venous return due to venous return in the atrium the atrium pressure is rising 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 so this is again the peak of the atrium pressure we know this wave is known as the v wave so at the peak point of this v wave the type b receptor is going to be activated so please please remember so type a receptor they are the receptor during systole and type b receptor they are the receptor which are going to be activated during diastole okay so these are the classification of the low pressure barrier receptor now okay so if the receptor is activated what is going to happen okay so very very important so if the low pressure barrier receptor is activated then what is the response of low pressure barrier receptor stimulation okay so low pressure barrier receptor stimulation number 1 if the low pressure barrier receptor is activated first it is going to activate there will be activation of one reflex which is known as the ben bridge reflex so if the low pressure barrier receptor is active where the low pressure barrier receptor is there right atrium and left atrium so if this receptor is stretched due to any reason if this receptor is stretched due to any reason it is going to activate your ben bridge reflex what is this reflex i am coming a little later second thing it is it is going to inhibit okay inhibit the supra optic nucleus of hypothalamus okay you know supraoptic and paraventricular nucleus so supraoptic nucleus of hypothalamus okay that will be inhibited how this inhibition will be there please remember okay please remember this inhibition occurs via unmyelinated fiber of vagus neuron vagus neuron means 10th cranial nerve so 10th cranial nerve is connected from this low pressure baroreceptor zone up to the level of this hypothalamus and what it is doing it is inhibiting the supraoptic nucleus of hypothalamus we know that the supraoptic nucleus of hypothalamus is going to produce adh so what will happen to the adh secretion decreases so now we try to compare okay you try to compare what is going to happen okay now in on the meantime i am writing the third effect so whenever this receptor is activated when the atrium is stretched the third thing that is going to happen is the increase amount of secretion increase amount of secretion of a peptide that is a n p atrial natri uretic peptide so from this name the the you can easily understand this is atrial natri uretic peptide means this is going to produce from atrium myocyte so this is the myocytes of atrium which is going to produce is atrial natri uretic peptide okay so these three things i have to remember that whenever there is stretch of the right atrium or left atrium but main and main is the right atrium so right atrium contain low pressure barrier receptor due to any reason if you activate this low pressure barrier receptor due to any reason if you activate this low pressure barrier receptor what is going to happen three things i have to remember 
नंबर वन एक्टिवेशन ऑफ़ द बेन बेज रिफ्लेक्स नंबर टू इनिबिशन ऑफ़ द सुपर ऑप्टिक न्यूक्लियस ऑफ़ हाइपोथैलेमस एंड नंबर थ्री देर इज इंक्रीज सिक्रेशन ऑफ ए एन पी ओके सो नाउ यू इमेजिन वॉट सिचुएशन सपोज ड्यू टू एनी रीजन योर ई सी एफ वॉल्यूम इज हाई सपोज ड्यू टू एनी रीजन योर ई सी एफ वॉल्यूम इज हाई ओके और सपोज ए पर्सन इज सपरिंग फ्रॉम कॉन्जेस्टिव हार्ट फेलियर ओके सो वॉट विल हैपन वॉट विल हैपन टू द ए एन पी सिक्रेशन ए एन पी सिक्रेशन विल बी इंक्रीज बिकॉज ऑफ द स्ट्रेच ऑन द राइट एट्रियम देन वॉट विल हैपन टू द ए डी एच सिक्रेशन ए डी एच सिक्रेशन विल बी डिक्रीज ए डी एच सिक्रेशन विल बी डिक्रीज सो वेन एवर देर इज इंक्रीज इन ई सी एफ वॉल्यूम देयर विल बी इंक्रीज इन वेनाज रिटर्न इंक्रीज वेनाज रिटर्न विल एक्टिवेट दिस रेस्पॉन्स ओके स्ट्रेचिंग ऑफ द लो प्रेशर बैरो डिसेप्टर वॉट इज गोइंग टू हैपन सिक्रेशन ऑफ ए एन पी विल बी secretion of adh will be lower along with that there will be activation of vein bridge reflex vein bridge reflex okay so please please you remember this thing now i am going to the mcq but before that you also remember that similar to this anp there is another peptide which is known as the bnp brain natriuretic uretic peptide the peptide was first isolated at the level of cnl that's why it is given the name brain natri uretic peptide but anp is produced from the anp is produced from the atrium myocyte okay remember like this and bnp is produced from the ventricular myocyte ventricular myocyte so these are the source of these two peptides what these two peptide is doing from the name it is natri uretic peptide natri uretic peptide then what is it is going to do it is going to inhibit the inac channel it is going to inhibit the inac channel at the level of collecting duct of nephron so whenever it is inhibiting the inac channel what is happen sodium reabsorption will not be there that mean there will be more excretion of there will be more excretion of sodium at the level of urine so that is the first thing second this anp and bnp they also causes vaso dilation they also causes vaso dilation so it will decrease the tpr total peripheral resistance will be decreased this has already been asked in the neat examination so please note down this point okay that it also causes vaso dilation and number 3 it causes dilation of the dilation of afferent arterioles afferent arterioles because of which it also improve the gfr gfr increases a little bit right so these three things i have to remember about anp and bnp anp is produced from atrium myocyte bnp is produced from ventricular myocyte bnp was first isolated at the level of brain that's why the name is brain natri uretic peptide right so please please remember these three things now you look at the mcq what has been asked from this topic okay number 1 okay so all of you try to answer whether you are correct or not now obviously your answer should be correct because we have discussed many things so first mcq in front of you okay everybody there i think dr sagar dr ramohan i can find out your name so low pressure receptor that play minimum role in atrial pressure changes we have discussed the low pressure barrier receptor they are not for blood pressure they are for volume receptor but respond to volume change are located in are located in so what is the answer of this question everybody give the answer so what will be the answer in this question type your answer we have discussed left atrium right atrium pulmonary artery yes yes it is present mainly in the right atrium it is also present in the left atrium it is also present at the level of pulmonary arterial wall so very good very good so now all of you are giving correct answer so thank you very much so my answer is all of the above right now i am going to the second question volume receptor r okay volume receptor r affected by total cardiac output stimulated by atrial systole and diastole stimulated by left ventricular contraction stimulated by aortic pressure tell me okay so volume receptor i told you they are nothing but low pressure baroreceptor because they are located on the venous side 
they are activated by increased volume in the atrium or pulmonary artery yes yes good <clears throat> everybody yes dr bhavani has given answer dr ramon dr sagar amir deron right okay so volume receptor means basically they are asking about the low pressure baroreceptor okay low pressure baroreceptor they are of two type if they are activated by atrium systole they are known as the type a receptor if they are activated by atrium diastole they are known as the type b receptor so please remember this is my answer okay low pressure baroreceptor and volume receptor they are not affected by total cardiac output because total cardiac output is in turn going to change the blood pressure okay stimulated by left ventricular contraction no not possible stimulated by aortic pressure aortic pressure activate the high pressure baroreceptor the normal baroreceptor which are located there it is not going to activate the low pressure baroreceptor which are present on the venous side so this answer is b here now coming to the third question be careful okay so this kind of question is going to come in future okay a balloon catheter is advanced from superior vena cava into the heart and inflated to the right atrium with a pressure of 5 mm of mercury an increase in which of the following would be expected to occur okay in response to elevated right atrium pressure so this question is clearly saying you whatever they are writing here they are clearly saying you that there is stretch on there is stretch on right atrium now i told you there are three response look at those three response try to remember those three response and try to answer what is the answer an increase in which of the following will be increase right excellent go on go on go on everybody i want answer because we have already discussed yes yes very good very good okay so please remember answer in this question is nothing but atrial natriuretic peptide okay atrial natriuretic peptide due to any condition if you stretch the right atrium they are going to secrete increase atrial natriuretic peptide right angiotensin aldosterone renal sympathetic activity all will be decrease not they are not going to increase okay they will be decrease this activity will be decrease if you stretch on the right atrium this decrement will be due to this atrial natriuretic peptide it is going to excrete your sodium so if the sodium excretion is going on what will happen okay what will happen gradually this thing is going to decrease okay so now i am coming to the next mcq an increase in atrial pressure result in which of the following okay so similar kind of question but here the question is an increase in atrial pressure result in which of the following four statement has been given you look at this statement and try to answer so right right okay so this is basically an increase in atrial pressure results in increase in amp secretion and just now we have discussed amp from the name i know that this is nothing but atrial natriuretic peptide so what is going to do it is going to increase your sodium from the body sodium excretion is going to be there okay but because of the sodium excretion you know what will happen there will be decrease in the plasma aldosterone concentration also there will be uh, decrease in the plasma angiotensin concentration also okay so this is the d is the answer in this question now i think we are going into this bain beige reflex okay so before going into the mcq i'll discuss what is bain beige reflex okay this is important so i told you that if you if you stretch the right atrium if you stretch the right atrium it is going to activate your bain beige reflex so now we are going to discuss what is this reflex okay so originally the reflex when it was first time discovered it is shown that infusion that infusion of normal saline nacl or blood 
in a experimental animal increases the heart rate okay this was the first noted in experimental condition that if you give infusion of nacl or blood there is increment of heart rate later on we found out that this reflex is also present in human body also you have seen in your clinic clinical practice that whenever you give infusion of uh, saline or blood if that infusion is if the infusion is rated rapid then what will happen there will be always tachycardia will be there okay if your infusion of nacl or any kind of fluid or the blood if the infusion or transfusion rate is a rapid one then it is going to cause tachycardia so why so so whenever i am giving infusion or nacl or blood to an person what is going to happen there will be increase in venous return now whenever there is increase in venous return right what is going to happen just now we have discussed that it is going to activate the low pressure low pressure baroreceptor so low pressure baro receptor right so right atrium wall contain low pressure baroreceptor it will be activated now whenever this low pressure baroreceptor is activated through the vagus neuron through the vagus neuron it is connected with the medulla please remember medulla is the center for this reflex so what i told so whenever whenever you stretch the right atrium whenever you stretch the right atrium suppose due to any reason your venous return is more on the right atrium this right atrium low pressure baroreceptor will be activated they will send signal to the medulla okay through which neuron through the vagus neuron through the unmyelinated fiber of vagus neuron unmyelinated fiber means c fiber of vagus neuron so through the unmyelinated fiber of vagus it is sending sent up to the medulla and whenever the signal is going to the medulla we know from this medulla the parasympathetic system of the heart parasympathetic system of heart is going to be inhibited as well as the sympathetic system of the heart is also going to be stimulated but please remember i am saying you again and again that parasympathetic of the heart sympathetic of the heart why i am using the word heart or heart again because this reflex is only and only localized to the level of heart means this sympathetic activation will not be seen in case of systemic vasculature this sympathetic activation is not going to happen in throughout the body the sympathetic activation and parasympathetic inhibition is going to occur only at the level of heart and whenever this parasympathetic is inhibited what is going to happen the heart rate is going to be increased so that's why look at the whole scenario now so whenever you give infusion of nacl or blood basically your low pressure baroreceptor is active and because of this low pressure baroreceptor activation what is going to happen the parasympathetic supply to the heart is inhibited and due to which the heart rate increases this reflex this reflex which we have just discussed is known as bain bridge reflex bain bridge reflex this is known as the bain bridge reflex so please remember the center for this reflex is the medulla okay the afferent for this reflex is the vagus neuron and efferent is the parasympathetic main along with that sympathetic is also there this is known as the vein bridge reflex okay now when the venous return is increased suppose i am taking a deep inspiration now i am telling you one phenomena suppose i am taking a deep inspiration one deep inspiration i have taken so what will happen whenever i am taking deep inspiration like this what is happening the intrapleural pressure become more negative whenever your intrapleural pressure become more negative what is going to happen it is going to increase your venous return it is going to increase your venous return and just now we have seen that whenever you increase your venous return what reflex is going to be activated bain bridge reflex is going to be activated so whenever your bain bridge reflex is active what will happen to your heart rate heart rate increase occur so please remember that's why you must have seen that if you take a deep inspiration and if you hold your breath you can check your pulse you can easily understand that the heart rate increases similarly if you take a deep expiration 
what will happen just opposite thing will occur and because of this opposite thing there will be decrease in heart rate so i can understand that with the breathing with inspiration and expiration my heart rate is changing my heart rate is changing with a respiratory cycle inspiration and expiration this change of heart rate with respiration is known as sinus arrhythmia this change of heart rate with respiration is known as sinus arrhythmia okay so getting my point sinus arrhythmia means change of heart rate change of respiratory rate during your inspiration and expiration so what is the reason if the question is there that what is the reason behind this sinus arrhythmia just now i told you one reason that there is activation of vein bridge reflex so there is activation of vein bridge reflex during in inspiration right number 2 okay already we have discussed the vein bridge reflex that during inspiration venous return is more that's why bbr will be activated apart from that apart from that remember the second reason second reason is there are some stretch receptor at the level of lung there are some stretch receptors okay at the level of lungs okay stretch receptor at the level of lung at which level at the level of smooth muscles of bronchi and bronchioles okay smooth muscles of bronchi and bronchioles contain stretch receptor of lungs right this stretch receptor whenever they are activated they can also inhibit the parasympathetic supply so whenever this stretch receptor of the lung is activated what will happen it can also inhibit the parasympathetic system of the heart and because of that it can also increases your heart rate okay so second reason so one is the activation of vein bridge reflex during inspiration that is going to cause a tachycardia second if i take a deep inspiration then there is dilation of my bronchi and bronchiole they are also going to activate okay so bronchi and uh, bronchi and bronchiole if they are dilated then what will happen the stretch receptor of lung is going to be activated when the stretch receptor of lung is active then also it can increase your heart rate and number 3 number third reason what is written in genome okay that a respiratory center has direct inhibition of cardiac center okay so respiratory center when it is active whenever you are taking inspiration okay so respiratory center is firing this firing is parallelly inhibiting the parasympathetic system of the heart so third i am writing that respiratory center has direct effect on direct effect on cardiac center and because of this also the heart rate changes along with respiratory rhythm so three reasons i told just now for the sinus arrhythmia okay so one is the vein bridge reflex second is the stretch receptor of the lung and third is the respiratory center has direct influence on cardiac center okay cardiac center so please remember all of these reason it will give you answer any of the question did you get this sinus arrhythmia and did you get this vein bridge reflex just give me a thumbs up whether you understood this or not okay vein bridge reflex and sinus arrhythmia did you got it everybody just give me a thumbs up if you have any question you can ask me or i will go for the mcq then okay right okay okay right okay so now very good very good so this is the three things that i have to remember that vein bridge reflex and related to the vein bridge reflex that sinus arrhythmia things very good okay now you look at this mcq and try to answer vein bridge reflex is initiated in which of the following condition now this mcq become very very easy but again i will ask you please read all of the option carefully here all of the option carefully here okay okay so that's why i'm saying you that you have to choose the best option okay read carefully all the option there is some trick here you have to choose the best option best option here okay injection of saline in the left atrium okay injection of saline in the left atrium no that is not possible okay they are going to produce 
okay they are going to produce your uh, a and b but they are not the main one here okay so increase venous pressure increase venous pressure is not equal to increase venous return okay increase venous pressure means not not always that there will be increase in venous return so option a is also false so yes all of you are absolutely correct that right atrial engorgement is the best answer because if you stretch the right atrium then and then only this vein bridge reflex is going to be activated okay so increase venous pressure is not always equal to increase venous return okay venous pressure i means the pressure within the vein is high that may or may not increase your venous return okay most of the cases they increases but it may not that's why i cannot choose that for my best selection of answer for best selection b is the choice here now look at here reflex responsible for tachycardia during right atrial distension okay now it is very very easy i hope no one is going to make a mistake here please tell me the answer right okay 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 now okay got it b vein bridge reflex very good so all of you are correct now suppose this question i have changed a little bit are you ready now suppose this question i have changes a little bit which of the following reflex produces tachycardia suppose i have not given this one i have not given this portion which of the following reflex produces tachycardia suppose this is a multi choice question multi choice question so obviously my vein bridge reflex is answer that it will produce tachycardia now tell me is there any other answer which produces tachycardia okay i'll discuss i'll discuss all of this but please tell me you know i hope okay so any other reflex can they produce tachycardia b is the answer b is the answer tachycardia obviously vein bridge reflex is producing tachycardia i am asking apart from vein bridge reflex if it is a multi choice question like pgi chandigarh question can any of them produce tachycardia answer is no 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 bejol jerry's reflex they are going to produce bradycardia right thank you they are going to produce brady cardia right cushing reflex all of you know cushing reflex all of you know that cushing reflex means whenever there is increase in intracranial tension it is going to produce brady cardia it is going to produce brady cardia this is reflex brady cardia via baroreceptor reflex pathway so this is going to produce brady cardia and this j receptor j receptor is the juxta capillary receptor these are the receptor these are the receptor which are present at the level of alveoli wall they are located at the level of alveoli wall close to the pulmonary capillary close to pulmonary capillary and when this receptor is also activated it produces hypotension bradycardia everything okay so again this is going to produce bradycardia so please remember all of this reflex even if this portion is not given also suppose this portion is not given during right atrial distension also then if the question is simple reflex responsible for tachycardia is which of the following okay that is nothing but that is nothing but vein bridge reflex explain all briefly okay i am going to this bejol jerry's reflex but before that i am going to discuss okay cushing reflex so cushing reflex uh, as you know that whenever there is increase in so what is this cushing reflex please remember all of them are very 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 important so dr ramon has asked that please discuss a little bit cushing reflex they are going to be activated whenever there is okay just i'm telling okay after cushing i will come to the j and then i'll come to the bejol jerry's and then i'm come to the mcq again okay hold on so cushing reflex due to any condition if your intra cranial tension is high means if your csa pressure csa pressure is high due to any condition suppose there is intracranial tumor okay or there is blockage of the pathway of the csa then what will happen the intracranial tension is going to be high in this cases the microvasculature 
micro vasculature okay which are present at the level of brain they are going to be compressed so micro vasculature compression will be there there will be compression of the cerebral microvasculature right so if the cerebral microvasculature compression is there what will happen it is going to produce hypoxia at the level of brain now rather than hypoxia at the level of brain if i look at the vasomotor center which are present at the level of medulla there will be hypoxia at the level of vasomotor center also so what i'm saying i'm saying that due to compression of the cerebral microvasculature what is happening there is hypoxia now if the hypoxia is occurring at the whole brain obviously it is going to suffer the hypoxia hypoxia is also going to oxia and hypercapnia are the most potent stimulus for vasomotor center so vasomotor center is going to be stimulated strongly because this local hypoxia is the most potent stimulus there now if your vasomotor center is stimulated all of you know that this center is nothing but it is the center which is connected with the sympathetic nerve which are releasing from the level of thoracolumbar region of spinal cord so basically this vasomotor center is connected with the spinal cord thoracolumbar region of the spinal cord and what is there in the thoracolumbar region that is the sympathetic so sympathetic system is going to be activated and this activation is very very strong because of this strong sympathetic activation what will happen there will be increased blood pressure of this subject so increased blood pressure means the person will suffer from hypertension so first thing cushing reflex patient will always have hypertension okay so what is cushing reflex increase intracranial tension whenever it is happening the person is going to suffer from hypertension and this hypertension is due to increased stimulation of vasomotor center now we know that whenever your blood pressure is high it is going to activate your another reflex pathway that is your baro receptor reflex pathway this baro receptor at the high pressure baro receptor this is not the low pressure baro receptor this is the high pressure baro receptor that is going to be activated right high pressure baro receptor means carotid sinus baro receptor and aortic arch baro receptor i am talking about now if you remember if you remember this high pressure baro receptor activation pathway then whenever this baro receptor is active it is going to do two things one it is going to inhibit the vasomotor center and it is going to activate the cic cardiac inhibitory center so vasomotor center and cardiac inhibitory center this is the separate pathway you have to read in baro receptor reflex pathway so when your baro receptor is active due to any condition it is going to inhibit the vasomotor center parallelly it is going to stimulate your cardiac inhibitory center now please remember i already told that vasomotor center means that is connected with the sympathetic and cic means this is the center which is connected with the parasympathetic system right so now you look at this pathway so now i am saying that whenever the ict is high vasomotor center is stimulated due to vasomotor center stimulation the blood pressure is high due to blood pressure high than cic which of the activity is not possible by baro receptor in this condition tell me baro receptor is trying to do both the things inhibition of vmc and stimulation of cic but which one is not possible in this scenario by baro receptor tell me i am waiting which of them is not possible by baro receptor right yes yes anybody anybody so what the baro receptor cannot do in this scenario baro receptor cannot inhibit the vasomotor center in this scenario if i ask you why because look at vasomotor center is already active and vasomotor center i told you that hypoxia is the most potent stimulation so vasomotor center is already active yes vasomotor exactly everybody is everybody is correct so now you got this thing so now this vasomotor inhibition is not possible by baro receptor but baro receptor can easily activate the parasympathetic center 
that is the CIC. Now when the parasympathetic system or parasympathetic center is active, what is going to happen? There will be decrease in heart rate. So that's why I told you that there will be bradycardia in a patient of increase ICT. Okay. So first feature. So now I am numbering this feature. So number one feature that the person will suffer from hypertension. This is the number one. Okay. Then second is that the person will also have the bradycardia. Okay. So first he will have hypertension. Second he will have bradycardia. And third due to increase ICT what will happen the respiratory center respiratory neuron which are present at the level of medulla there will be compression there will be compression of this respiratory center okay if the pressure is very very high and due to this respiratory center compression what will happen there will be irregular breathing so this irregular breathing okay this irregular breathing is the third feature of this Cushing reflex okay this irregular breathing is the third feature of this Cushing reflex so first one is the hypertension second one is the bradycardia and third one is the irregular breathing these three features are known as the triad of these three features are known as the triad of Cushing reflex okay sir does not causes increased heart rate yes heart rate is mainly regulated by very very important thing that sympathetic system is stimulated why the heart rate is not increased very very valid question heart rate is mainly regulated by the sa node and av node and atrium region including the sa node and av node they are mainly under the influence of parasympathetic system sympathetic although they stimulate at the level of atrium but their main action is on the level of ventricular muscle ventricular contractility but parasympathetic they mainly supply at the level of atrium and heart rate is mainly regulated by parasympathetic okay that's why heart rate will not be high due to sympathetic stimulation here heart rate is mainly controlled by this parasympathetic system got it dr sahil okay so that's why heart rate will not be stimulated only the ventricular contractility will be very very strongly stimulated and because of the ventricular contractility the blood pressure is going to be high mainly okay and the heart rate will be controlled by this parasympathetic activation right okay so this is about the this is about the Cushing reflex okay got it now everybody now on the other hand somebody asked that what is this j receptor reflex so just now i told you j stands for j stands for juxta capillary j receptor okay number one they are located at the level of alveoli wall close to the capillary so suppose this is my alveoli lung alveoli and this is my capillary okay so just close to this capillary okay on the alveolar wall there are some receptor there are some receptor here and this receptor are known as j receptor like right? now when this receptor activation occurs so activation of this receptor remember one thing that none of the stimulus for the j receptor is physiological what i told none of the physiological stimuli can activate j receptor means all of them are pathological stimuli so what are they if there is presence of water molecule at the lung interstitium so if there is lung edema if there is pulmonary edema or if there is pneumonia or if there is congestion at the level of this pulmonary capillary so pulmonary artery congestion congestion of the pulmonary capillary congestion of pulmonary capillary okay or if there is pulmonary embolism all of this thing is going to activate the j receptor which are known as the juxta capillary receptor right now when this receptor is activated suppose this receptor is activated suppose there is a small emboli in in a lung small emboli suppose there is a small emboli okay so small emboli means it cannot produce severe hypoxia there is a small emboli but if there is any emboli this is going to activate your J receptor and if your J receptor is activated what is the response response is there will be hypotension so decreased blood pressure decreased heart rate bradycardia along with that there will be apnea 
there may be bronchoconstriction there may be dyspnea bronchoconstriction and there will be dyspnea okay so please remember all of these are the feature of j receptor activation hypotension bradycardia apnea and bronchoconstriction all of them are going to happen if you are activating this j receptor okay juxta capillary receptor okay juxta capillary receptor or juxta pulmonary receptor okay so edema so now you got it so this is the j receptor you may remember one thing never forget that this is activated due to pathological stimuli any of them are not physiological okay so please remember now i am coming to the last one that is the basal jerry reflex so i am going to the returning to the main topic where we have started okay so here we have started okay cardiopulmonary baroreceptor okay so we have discussed that they are located at the level of atrium wall pulmonary arterial wall okay and they are known as the low pressure baroreceptor fine now on the other hand i told you that there are some cardiopulmonary baroreceptor on the ventricular wall at the level of ventricular wall okay so which ventricle mainly they are mainly located at the level of left ventricular wall greater than septum of the ventricle greater than right ventricular wall so there are some cardiopulmonary baroreceptor even at the level of ventricular wall but if the you if you stimulate this receptor okay if you stimulate this receptor then you are going to activate one reflex which is known as the bejold jerry's reflex so please remember if the question is coming that what is the receptor location of basal jerry's reflex your answer will be ventricular wall left ventricular wall posterior wall of the left ventricle that is the main okay left ventricular wall is the main location of this basal jerry's receptor so what type of receptor there please remember the receptor for this basal jerry's reflex or the receptor which are located in the ventricular wall they are both mechano receptor means they can be activated by stretch also but mainly they are chemo receptor so please remember they are mechano sensitive as well as chemo sensitive this is the language of the book means the ventricular receptor can be activated by mechanical stimuli as well as chemical stimuli also but mainly they are chemo receptor so what is the stimulus for this basal jerry's reflex so what is the stimulus for this reflex okay so chemical number one originally originally the reflex was discovered in presence of a alkaloid that in v e r a t r i d i n vera tridin vera tridin okay this is an alkaloid originally the scientist found out that whenever you inject this vera tridin into the left coronary artery then you are getting this basal jerry reflex okay vera tridin but now we came to know that apart from meratradin serotonin can also activate this basal jerry reflex as well as it can also be activated by capsaicin that is the active ingredient of chili okay chili that is these three chemicals can activate this basal jerry reflex now if you activate this reflex so now we got the stimulus if you activate this reflex then what is going to happen remember this is same to same with that of the j receptor activation just now we have discussed the j receptor that's just now we have discussed the j receptor the response here is similar almost similar to j receptor activation so what will happen there will be severe hypotension there will be severe bradycardia decrease in heart rate there will be severe hypotension severe bradycardia will be there as well as there will be vaso dilation there will be vaso dilation mainly coronary vaso dilation so these three response are known as the triad of basal jerry's reflex but apart from this there will be apnea followed by rapid swallow breathing rapid shallow breathing so apnea followed by rapid shallow breathing okay so please please remember there will be hypotension bradycardia vasodilation apnea followed by rapid shallow breathing so all of these are seen in case of basal jerry reflex activation but whatever i have written here this hypotension bradycardia 
and vasodilation these are the triad of basal jelly reflex it means uh, equating chili uh, decreasing blood pressure no 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 you have to inject this chili you have to inject the chili into your left coronary artery because where the receptor are located ventricular wall that means if you inject capsaicin into your coronary artery then you are sure shot going to get this reflex all of this thing is going to happen so question is no one is going to no one is going to you are very very valid you are very your question is very valid that sir no one is going to in, in inject this capsaicin or serotonin into my left coronary artery so why should you read this reflex what is the clin clinical relevance of this reflex okay number 1 this reflex okay clinically clinically this reflex can be activated number 1 during myocardial infraction particularly during reperfusion therapy during reperfusion therapy so it is said that during myocardial infraction or when you are during reperfusion therapy there are certain release of chemicals from the dead tissues of myocardium these chemicals which are released from the dead tissues or there are production of certain oxygen radicals all of them can activate this a ventricular wall receptor and it can produce severe hypotension bradycardia and vasodilation so that's why sometimes in a myocardial infraction patient just after starting the reperfusion therapy if you are getting severe hypotension severe bradycardia they that means it has activated the basal jerry's reflex number 1 number 2 this reflex can also be activated during coronary angiography coronary angiography so these two things i have to remember during coronary angiography we inject certain dye okay sometime this dye if it contains some impure chemical impurity if the dye is from a very very good brand and very very good company then nothing is going to happen and most of the cases that is a scenario but if this dye contain even a little amount of impurity in the form of serotonin or any kind of such substances then it can also produce severe bradycardia severe hypotension as well as apnea and vasodilation so this is the basal jerry's reflex which we have just now discuss got it everybody okay so again the basal jerry's reflex is going to activate your going to activate your uh, uh, going to uh, causes your bradycardia that is the thing i have to remember here okay fine now look at the mcq here okay so you have answered this now you give me that okay okay so now this is the thing i'm just waiting you will answer then i'll discuss here so infusion of normal saline in an animal after cutting the bilateral vagus leads to now all thing you know okay now you try to answer you are going to make a mistake here that's why i put this question that's why i put this question because some discussion is still remaining everybody try to answer this question after cutting bilateral vagus so increase venous return benbej reflex activation okay wow and benbej reflex when it is activated the heart rate increment occurred due to this vagus neuron to the level of medulla this we have discussed okay and from there the parasympathetic is inhibited that's why there is increment of heart rate that's why it will increase the heart rate okay now tell me okay sagar you will answer you will get your answer at the end of this session okay now here i have cut this vagus neuron i have cut this vagus neuron so if i cut this vagus neuron 
then low pressure baroreceptor will be activated but this increment of heart rate is not possible is it yes because I told you that increased venous return means it is activating the brain bridge reflex but the brain bridge reflex pathway will be activated via this low pressure baroreceptor and if the low pressure baroreceptor is active then through the vagus neuron medulla is going to be activated and from the medulla parasympathetic will be inhibited but I have cut the vagus so if you cut the vagus means in this condition in this condition I can write down that BBR pain bridge reflex will not be seen will not be activated so if the pain bridge reflex is not active then heart rate is not going to increase via this pathway but increase venous return also causes stretch on stretch on s a node directly s a node is located on the right atrium so if there is increased venous return on the right side of the atrium then there will be increased stretch on the sa node also and if your sa node is stretched there are some ion channels which will be activated and open up in the sa node and if those ion channels are active or if there is stretch on this sa node it can also increases your heart rate so now we came to two conclusion that whenever there is increased venous return on the right atrium so i am writing here my conclusion that increase venous return to the right atrium one is activation of this vein bridge reflex so it will increase the heart rate second is the increment of heart rate is 65 percentage from the basal level and if your sa node is stimulated the increment of heart rate is 15 percentage that means due to infusion of this NACL the increment of heart rate can reach up to 75 percent of the basal condition but if you cut this vagus neuron bilaterally then my vein bridge reflex pathway is disconnected but still this SA nodal pathway will remain and through this SA nodal pathway there will be increase in heart rate so there will be increase in heart rate a little bit okay but you will get your answer okay so here your answer will be increase in heart rate okay heart rate will not remain same it will not decrease it will increase right okay now coming to the next question all of the following causes sinus tachycardia except now please everybody try to give correct answer here all of the following causes sinus arrhythmia except We have directly discussed this question. We have directly discussed this question. So just tell me the answer. Anybody? Right. Go, 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 go. Everybody? Go, go. We have discussed this thing in detail. Please don't make mistake. So direct influence of the respiratory center to cardiac center. Yes, this is correct. Okay. Bain bridge reflex activation. Yes, correct. Stretch receptor of the lung. Yes, this is also correct. So chemo receptor stimulation. This is my answer. It has no role for sinus arrhythmia. So this is the answer here. Now, last question. Bejol Jerry's reflex is due to. Bejol Jerry's reflex is due to. Right. Okay. So what is the substances we have discussed this thing now give me the answer histamine no pg no angiotensin no so what is my answer serotonin so we have discussed about basal jerry's reflex also so you can easily answer now i'll finish up the session with a yes capsaicin serotonin and veratrodin now we are finishing up this session with a conclusion suppose i am saying that there is increase in ECF volume in a person right suppose you have given infusion of NACL or normal saline so you are thinking only of brain bridge reflex but I can say that this is also going to increase my blood pressure as Sagar has told already that it is going to increase my blood pressure is it true or false yes why not if you infuse ECF volume is increased if you infuse NACL or blood your blood pressure will be high yes and parallelly because your ECF volume is high your venous return will also be high both are correct 
but if my blood pressure is high then it is going to activate the high pressure baroreceptor high pressure baroreceptor is going to be active which are present in the carotid sinus and aortic arch and if my venous return is increased then it is going to activate my vein beige reflex so both the reflex are parallelly active now if you look at the activation of this baroreceptor what is the effect on heart rate what is the effect on heart rate activation of the baroreceptor causes inhibition of the vmc and stimulation of the cic just now we have seen stimulation of the cardiac inhibitory center parasympathetic so stimulation of the parasympathetic center means what will happen to heart rate it will try to inhibit the heart rate and if my vein beige reflex is active then it will try to increase the heart rate so note down note down heart rate is regulated by both of these reflex parallelly one is trying to decrease the heart rate and one is trying to increase the heart rate please try to understand very carefully this is important or bottom line of this topic on the other hand suppose just i am giving opposite scenario of this if there is decrease in eca volume so everything will be opposite everything opposite means there will be decrease in blood pressure why not there will be decrease in venous return now if there is decrease in blood pressure then it is going to inhibit my baroreceptor right opposite thing and if there is decrease in venous return then it is going to inhibit my vein beige reflex now if the vein beige reflex is inhibited then what will happen to heart rate now the heart rate will be decrease and if the baroreceptor is inhibited then vasomotor center will be activated so it will try to increase the heart rate so note down in both the scenario when the ecf volume is high or when the ecf volume is low baroreceptor and vein beige reflex they are acting opposite to control the heart rate in this scenario when my when my venous return is decreased and vein beige reflex is inhibited sometimes this is also known as sometimes this is also known as reverse reverse vein bridge reflex this has already been asked in ems entrance examinations reverse vein bridge reflex that means simple understand inhibition of the vein bridge reflex so if there is normal activation of the vein bridge receptor vein bridge reflex then there will be tachycardia but reverse vein bridge reflex means there will be bradycardia inhibition of the receptor okay but my bottom line is that increase ecf volume or decrease ecf volume both the reflex is acting parallelly and they are opposite to each other so what is the bottom line bottom line is that in case of hyper volumic condition in case of hyper volumic condition your vein beige reflex is more dominant than baro receptor reflex and in case of hypovolemic condition when your blood volume is less when your body fluid volume is less hypovolemic condition in this cases my baro receptor is more dominant than vein beige reflex that's why now you look at in case of hypervolemic condition so whenever you have injected ecf volume in your body that is a hypervolemic condition who is going to be activated or more dominant that is the vein beige reflex and what he is doing it is stimulating the heart rate so there will be tachycardia so that's why increase ecf volume if it is occurring rapidly then there will be increase in heart rate but on the other hand whenever there is decrease in ecf volume in this condition who is going to be active which reflex is more active that is the baroreceptor now if my baroreceptor is mainly active then it is going to stimulate my heart rate going to stimulate my heart rate means what will happen to my heart rate here also increase heart rate that means in both the cases there will be tachycardia and you have seen that thing okay that if there is a hemorrhage suppose this is a severe hemorrhage from the body severe hemorrhage so what will happen there will be tachycardia tachycardia but this tachycardia is produced by 
baro receptor reflex but in case of hypervolemia again there will be tachycardia if you infuse rapid blood or rapid infusion of saline again there will be tachycardia but this tachycardia is due to vein vage reflex sir so sir person with hypertension with further will further increase their heart rate cardiac output systolic blood pressure it depends what is the causes of hypertension it depends what is the causes of hypertension i told you hypervolemia if it is the cause of hypertension so if you are thinking of a essential hypertension patient then it will not going to happen there because this is not volume change in essential hypertension okay so it depends what is the cause if the cause of hypertension is hypervolemia that's why i have started from here that in case of hypervolemic condition not the hypertension i have used the word hypervolemic condition okay if there is hypertension then vein vage reflex it is not going to be active because they are activated by volume so you have to think of that okay so if there is hypervolemia then your vein vage reflex is more but it so this is all about your vein vage reflex baroreceptor reflex basal jerry's reflex and everything about this small topic got it i hope everybody understood what in now is there any question you can ask but now i am ending the session just to give you one information that i am taking this concise batch course for the neat phys okay and also the revision batch course all of this session are going on parallelly and the session some of the session has been recorded and some of the session are still remaining okay and now if you look at the um, uh, the teacher for your batch course uh, then you can see that there are big names in this batch course like for physiology i am taking care of for pathology dr devesh mishra is there and for uh, radiology dr nikita is there for medicine dr dilip sir is there so everybody is there so if you want to join in any of these courses please do use my referral code that is dr s o u m e n 10 okay dr soman 10 right thank you very much thank you so much for listening so i am ending my session good night take care all of you